Welcome to Ramadan in Focus. I'm Yusuf Estes, and we're talking about focusing on various aspects and the facets of Ramadan in this beautiful month, the month of mercy, the month of fasting, the month of sharing, the month of gathering, the month of praying, the month of remembering Allah. One of the things that we want to focus on is the role of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him. What would we say is the role of Muhammad? How do we see him as Muslims? Now, in some religions, their key figure is almost worshipped, or even worshipped, or considered a god, or a godhead, a son of a god, or part of the god. <clears throat> and that's not Islam. We don't have that idea about Muhammad, peace be upon him. We do know that he was born, and we do know that he died. We know that he ate food, we know he went to the toilet. We know that he made decisions. We know that he worked hard. We know that he toiled and he did many good things. We know he made some mistakes. He never made any major sins. But we know that he was a human being in every possible way. He was as human as human can be human. And still he was the best of the humans. About Prophet Muhammad, though, as a role model for us, and that's how we see him to look to him to be the role model. Because when we hear the Quran recited to us and we think about it, but what does Allah mean for me? How do I understand this? And we can take one example right away from the Quran relative to this month of Ramadan and see an example of Muhammad being our role model. Someone that we would go to to ask him a question or to look to him as the example of what to do. And in this case, Allah tells us in the Quran in chapter 2 about fasting. Fasting the month of Ramadan. He says, eat and drink through the night. Eat and drink through the night as you like until the white thread is distinguishable from the black thread. The abiyad, the white, from the aswad, the black. Now, what did that mean exactly? So one of the companions of Muhammad, peace be upon him, actually took a white thread and a black thread and laid it there and watched that and was waiting for it so that he could see when the sun was up enough that he could distinguish the white from the black. And my gosh, this was even after the time of Fajr before he could see it. Because the white thread and the black thread, he couldn't see either one of them until the sun got up so much he said, up. Oh, Fajr's gone already. What's that? You see? So when he went to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he asked him about it, the Prophet made it clear, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that this is not talking about the thread like you have in your garment. It's not the kind of thread that comes from a, you know, animal um, wool or something like that or cotton. No. This is the white thread of dawn against the black thread of night. So at the very first sign of a change in the lighting on the horizon when dawn begins, that's when you must stop eating and drinking. And it's about the same time that Fajr comes in and you hear the Adhan. So when they call the Adhan for Fajr, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, right from there you know, uh-oh, time for me to stop eating and drinking. Nothing about pieces of thread after all. But now wait a minute. Here's another chance for us to learn something from our role model from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, relative to this month of fasting. So it happened, and it could happen to any of us, that we hear the Adhan and we're eating, we have food in our mouth or drink in our mouth, okay? And somebody might just go, okay, I'm going to walk to the sink and just spit it all out. I walk to the garbage can, just spit it all out because I heard the Adhan, I, I, I don't know what to do. <clears throat> that happened at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him. It was Omar, Rali Allahu Anhu, who came to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he was actually drinking. He had some drink in a cup or container, and he looked at Muhammad like, what do I do now? You know, I've got this uh, drink, but the Adhan is going off. Somebody's reciting Adhan and calling to the prayer and, uh, you know, what can I do? The Prophet, peace be upon him, told him, finish it. Go ahead and drink it. 
So because of that, many of us today, if we have something in our hand, because he had it in his hand, we say, well, you can finish it. And <laughs> comically, I'm telling you, this is sort of funny, not necessarily right, but funny, that when they see, oh, he's getting ready to make the Adhan, let me grab my whole plate. <laughs> and everything on my plate, I can eat that, take my time, and keep eating. Now, whether or not that's correct is another matter, but the idea here is if you have something that you're eating or drinking already, finish it up. Don't waste the food. And make sure that you get something in your stomach. So while the Adhan is going off, I've even known that some had woke up just to hear, oh, the Adhan's going off, and they drank some water while the Adhan was going off, so they'd have something in their stomach. Uh, you might check with your local scholars and talk to them about this idea, to help you get a better focus on it, but certainly we see that Muhammad is the one who is showing us how. He's showing us how to be the Muslim we want to be and how we can get our deeds accepted. The same is true of other parts of Islam. For instance, we know that you have to pay zakah, which is a purification of the wealth of the wealthy. That the money you don't use over a period of time, you have so much money for the beginning of the year to the end of the year, and there's a certain portion. Now, it went up and down, up and down, but the part that didn't change, you always had $50 or you always had $500, whatever it might have been, that amount is due some sadaka or zakah, purification, actually. So 2.5% of that must be given directly to the poor not given to the masjid to build a bigger masjid, not given out, you know, to uh, different charities in general, but specifically to the poor and those who are impoverished. And those that are closest to you of your family are first, and then those of your neighbors and so on are next. You want to take care of the poor people with that money. It is not just something you throw out there and say, okay, I made some sadaka here. No. It is a zakat and it has rules, so you want to check into that and get a good focus on that. And this is the month to do that because in the month of Ramadan, you get so much more reward for any good deed. So that's why many people would like to give their zakat in the month of Ramadan. Now, I want to come back, though, talking about how Muhammad is, peace be upon him, he's our role model because he's the one telling us about the different kinds of taxation which would be on this zakat. I mentioned two and a half percent, but in the case of growing grain, you have some grain that you're growing up, it could be corn or wheat or barley or so and so and such or rice, whatever. If it is irrigated, there is a different percentage. But if it's naturally irrigated, by Allah, he's sent water down, this is a higher percentage. And you go to the books to learn about that. And how do you know? Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us. There are some other things too. When we look to the Hajj, this pilgrimage that we do, there are many things in Quran telling us that you have to go to the place that was established by Abraham and his son, Ishmael, and what they did. But then in general, because we don't know the specific unless we look to Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he tells us, well, this is how you do this, this is how you do that. How do I enter into the state of Ihram? the proper attire and attitude, these are two things, attire and attitude, when I go into this state of going for pilgrimage, to be a real pilgrim of Islam. And he's showing you. For one thing is, you don't wear the kind of shoes that we normally wear that are stitched up. Oh, didn't know that. Okay, also you don't wear garments like I have on here that are stitched up, sewn together, pockets, all these kinds of things. Rather, it's two simple garments, a lower one that's a wrap and an upper one that's a wrap. And they're white, not stitched. So how would we know that? Ah, because Muhammad, peace be upon him, has told us this and showed us this by the way he did it, the way his companions did it. So again and again, we're seeing throughout all of Islam, we do learn from the Quran <clears throat> a very general understanding of what Allah wants. But then specifically, we need to look at Prophet Muhammad to find the details, the specifics, the way that Allah wants it done. We know that whoever says, Ashadu ila ila illallah, 
meaning that I bear witness there's none to worship except the law. La Sharik Allah, he has no partners, has entered upon the threshold of Islam. We know that. And this is great. But without the next part, he may still be very lacking, and which is Wa ashadu anna Muhammadin Abduhu Rasul. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger and his servant. And as such, what? As such, I'm going to follow him. I'm going to do my very best to listen to what he tells me to do and follow his way to do it. That's called in Arabic sunnah, to follow the sunnah of Muhammad. And about this, I want you to know that Allah tells us in the Quran clearly, Say, O Muhammad, if you really love Allah, follow me, follow Muhammad. Because in following him, and it continues, then Allah will love you. You say you love Allah, but you want Allah to love you, you have to follow his prophet. You follow his prophet, Allah will love you. He will forgive your sins. Because he's the forgiver and he's the merciful. And Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, for sure the best example for you is in the messenger of Allah. Meaning Muhammad, peace be upon him. For those that seek the pleasure of Allah on the last day, and they remember Allah often. So let us focus on that. Who is this man, Muhammad, to me? Is he really my role model? Is he my example? Do I want to be like him, copy him in every aspect? Because if you really do, then you're living up to the Shahada by believing in Allah and following the Messenger. And this is the real Islam. And this is the month really for us to come in tune with that, to focus on that in this beautiful month of Ramadan, the month the Quran came in, the month that Muhammad Sallallahu received this and began to communicate it. This beautiful, beautiful month, the month called Ramadan. And this beautiful prophet and the example, the best of examples to us is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Well, that's it for Ramadan in Focus this episode. Until next time, peace. Salam. Oh.